systems itself, I'm uh, trying to draw a circuit. Okay. So if this is your data, say D of I is the data input. Through two D flip flops, we are trying to value. Maybe this becomes uh, old. Sorry. And this becomes old. and old data if you take these two tapping points and these two if you take them through an XOR operation this equation is implemented your transition implement okay. and where we'll be using this uh, uh, data transition the signal of uh, transition using a counter okay a counter maybe a little bit uh, bigger one i take a counter i said uh, to check about this 163 counter 74 ls 163 okay where uh, you'll be having count enable parallel count uh, enable trickle these are the uh, signals based on which the count will be initiated okay whether it is uh, all say if you take set of counters this will be used say you'll be using all the counters uh, to count at a time maybe this signal will be used for us we'll be using this one count enable trickle Okay, that means whatever the count it, uh, it completes, it issues a signal saying that the terminal count is complete. Say we are counting this for uh, say um, a four bit uh, counter, 16 counts if it is. Okay, after 16 counts, it issues a signal saying that uh, terminal count is complete. If this is on, indicates complete uh, count is uh, finished. Okay. So the other uh, signals what we have is the clear signal. OK, uh, this will be taking uh, input. Let me take here the clear and your uh, load is one more signal where it is if it is parallel operation this will be issued uh, in parallel okay so this count enable parallel and count yeah, this clear will be these two signals will be used okay and this will be something like if you are counting you need to count so when the counter needs to count that signal will be given here and when it should be cleared this will be initiated okay and uh, this is active low permanently made high so that we are not using this now at the moment and it runs on the system clock so this system clock, the frequency of this will be decided by the operation or the designer. Okay. And what are the outputs uh, apart from this terminal count? This is a four bit counter. You will be getting a count operation and this is terminal count. So C0, C1, C2, C3. This four bit uh, count. Okay, and these are all outputs. And um, this uh, also, if you are not using, or uh, uh, we are trickling this, so we will be using this for uh, I. Indicates that we are disabling this one. We are enabling this one. Okay, so. Based on these two signals, whether a count clear or count uh, increment will be happening. And where from these uh, signals will be issued is, uh, let me take here, this transition, okay, 
and uh, if you remember that equations, you refer back those equations. I'm taking those equations only from that. This transition data along with uh, count 15, uh, like uh, if all uh, elements are equal to one, it is count 15, yes or no? All are one. That means terminal count is complete. This will be 15. Yeah, we can use an AND gate for this. So whenever the condition of the count equal to uh, 15 in the sense, I'm taking uh, the full count, like a four bit counter I'm using. So full count means 15. Half count means? Yesterday example, we have taken Seven. eight and four. For explanation, what was the count I have given? Eight and four. Or n, n by two. Full count and half count. Now that n happens to be uh, your uh, 16. That means uh, 163 will be a four bit counter, means that it is full count will be 16. When the count is 15, that means 0 to 15 full count, that will be taken by an adding of all these uh, outputs. If this is all one, you are getting an output uh, saying that count is 15. Okay, and this count 15 along with, that means here, see, I'm taking this as an AND gate of uh, C0, C1, C2, C3, C0, C1, C2, C3. Uh, maybe uh, you need to visualize this connected here. Okay. You take these two, okay, an operation of what is that to be done if I take this as an ticket? Is this bit uh, clock uh, on? Take it off. Is this bit clock on? Clock transition has to be false, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Clock transition has to be false. Uh, false. And the so count zero. has to equal n by 2. So this gate should be a. Sorry. Or gate. Inverted or gate is that you are using the clock uh, zero. So what is that you get here is uh, will you get uh, clock on or off? I'm not checking the uh, yesterday's equation. Just uh, check it out. I think this should be uh, your bit clock uh, off. Um, we should consider count n by two also, right? When count is equal to n by two. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come to that also. Now, this, uh, this, this is the equation of bit clock off I'm taking. And the same thing, uh, I think counter off also will be uh, same as these two equations are similar, no? As today. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And this is, if count off means this is equal to, I can take this as uh, count counting operation to be false. Yes, ma'am. Uh, they're complement. Uh, uh, complement of that. Okay. Now, uh, when the signal will be uh, issued is either you can take this and operation. I'm uh, giving you a, an, another alternate thing. What we are saying is terminal count will be issued when the full count is complete. That is uh, one facility you have in this uh, 163 IC. So instead of taking this AND operation through an AND gate at time all this, whenever this is on, that means one, directly I can say that this is terminal count of five. I'm giving you alternates, okay. Either you can take this uh, hardware or uh, this connectivity, both means the same. 
one one of it you choose uh, in order to make your uh, bit clock off or your counter off okay and uh, okay this terminal count uh, to be high is uh, your count the condition of count uh, equal to n full count this indicates that your count is n n is now you know for 163 it is 15 okay so this is the uh, indication that full count is complete in our flow we had this one test variable condition <coughs> Okay. Now, using this itself, if I take, sorry, the, this is what we are getting. This is transition. This transition along with the count being equal to 7. If this signal, if you take, Maybe you take this through an OR gate. So invert this and count this, make this as 0, 0 OR gate. This will make the bit clock on. Okay, uh, what is this condition? Uh, how you will be evaluating this condition? Why I am taking this active low is uh, I can take from this the uh, these fellows. What is your C0, C1, C2, C3? This is the order we are, will be taking the count. So 1110. No? So uh, this fellow I'm taking. This if I bubble, that means uh, bubbling in the sense inverting along with this is taken as maybe this is mixed logic design if you want you can remove this bubble also directly you can take this as an and gate okay this is equivalent of and gate so no so this sets your bit clock on. Yes. So we need one one more uh, element of uh, taking these two signals, this one, these two signals, and uh, say I connect them. This is total hardware. You try to understand this based on your equations. Okay. Uh, we can use this JK for setting and resetting. I think I have given you this uh, operation of setting and resetting JK using JK. Uh, J being high, K being low, if you take say. I think uh, the applications of JK, I have said this in, uh, I think, uh, last week uh, class, if you remember. Check it out. Using J and K being active high and low correspondingly, this is uh, your active low signal and this is your active high signal. Okay. What is the operation you are performing to the same system clock? Whatever you are feeding in, take the same system clock. Here also the same system clock will be used. Same system clock will be used here also. Same system clock. Now what are the operations you will be having? Uh, like uh, you have this preset and this is your clear. And Q Q bar. This is the ultimate output of our design. This is the ultimate output. That is our bit clock. So this this signals will be generated based on the logics of the count. 
whether it is full count or half count. This is the iteration we are taking full count or half count the connectivity. Okay, based on the assessment of the new and old data being same or different. Okay, so if they are similar, this conditions will be checked. If they are different straight away, it will be uh, like uh, it will be set or uh, reset your bit clock. This is your hardware. Okay. So uh, this is complement uh, you can take here also. If this is on, you'll be taking this is off uh, terminal. Vice versa. You can use both uh, terminals. That is advantage of your uh, binary. If you use a flip flop, you will be having both the values available as a ready information there. OK, uh, so data transfer. OK, uh, this logic what we are using here is uh, uh, based on the commercial applications. Uh, what is the um, predefined data transfer rate and all? Normally, nine bits uh, will be transferred at a time, or uh, what you say, uh, is it byte or nibble? Nine bits, byte or nibble. Hmm? What is nibble? What is byte? What is the size? How many bits? Four bits is a nibble and eight is byte. Yeah, so the data transfer normally will be done in terms of byte transfers and byte transfers is something like we need to have that set of uh, uh, information. That means the byte of data readily available uh, for the data to be transferred either serially or parallelly. Okay, so it means that there is a supplier of this byte which is isolated. This is some other source. The byte supplier is another source placed not in the design, but it will be some other design or what you say, some other entity. So this supplier will be issuing or sending the data. And the data has to be uh, transferred or what you say uninterruptedly supplied to the transferring element. Means that there should not be any break of this information because when you are using these designs into a major design, the data abruptly should not be stopped or it should not be overwritten. Overriding should not be happening, or else the breaking also should not be happening. Both the things should be avoided. So, in order to have such uh, like uh, an error-free element of uh, data transfer, the supplier should be continuously sending the data, which doesn't know the information of what is the data transfer rate, or uh, how many bits are getting transferred, or what is the um, uh, what you say the starting and uh, the ending point of that uh, information and all. It should be continuously, uninterruptedly be uh, be sending the data. So this data transfer unit should be able to accumulate or what you say the gather the information of the bits that are being supplied. And once the data is uh, like uh, getting accumulated. Uh, something like whenever the information is ready, that means it is filled, totally filled, complete, then we issue a signal saying that uh, the uh, data is ready for data transfer. Okay. And whenever, like, uh, the supplier gets an information of uh, try uh, load the buffer. It doesn't need any reply from this uh, gathering unit uh, saying that we received the data. Okay, on, only one side uh, or what you say unidirectional signal will be given. Okay. 
so this parallel to serial data transfer or serial to parallel data transfer parallel means the buffer should be supplied and once that uh, 8 bits of the byte information is ready it will be transferring that uh, one bit by bit onto the output okay meanwhile the supplier should be sending the data and it should be indicated that this uh, the buffer which was storing the earlier data is ready to accept the new data okay and the same way serial uh, to parallel thing is that uh, once it is getting filled, okay, it is one uh, slot or what you say one clock, this total complete data will be transferred for one clock. This is per clock bit by bit. This is all bits per clock. So here the this design will be issuing a signal to the byte supplier saying that it is ready to accept a new data. And this is dumping of data, we can say, because all the bits are uh, being dumped at uh, one single clock. We say that this is after the data is getting accumulated. Serially, it will be pushed in. It will be gathered. And once it is ready, we will be issuing a signal that you try to uh, read the data out read the data out so two signals will be used in one operation it is loading the data in the next operation uh, trying to read the data okay so uh, how many bits we are uh, transferring that much uh, size of counter we can use maybe count of eight we are using here because that is a byte uh, transfer and um, this is a simplest design where we are transferring the data once this count is complete. And when this completion of a count is happening, we will be issuing a signal saying that to load the data, new data. Or else the data is ready to be transferred, it is read data. Two signals will be issued. Okay. So maybe partially this will be adding this portion also into its circuit we'll see how okay uh, something like first parallel to serial if you take first is this is uh, the operation of uh, converting or what you say bit by bit transfer no? this is bit by bit transfer because this is serial out so it will be putting that onto lsb because lsb is the output uh, portion or what you say the point at which we try to take the output and msb will be normally the input uh, side if it is serial operation we are taking parallel means everything will be getting all the uh, bits at a time okay we are speaking of serial operation so whenever one increment in the clock is happening one count is happening one bit should be sent on to your LSB. For every one count, one bit will be sent out. Okay. So, um, after eight bits, after eight bits transfer, the new data has to be uh, ready onto the buffer. Now, the buffer here is the data storage element. So, there, is, there should be an indication saying that that data is getting transferred through your LSB and the complete uh, previous uh, byte of data is transferred and it is ready for accepting a new data. So this is the communication between the buffer and the supplier that will be happening. Okay, so um, I can take this as a simple ASM way. For every, uh, this is serial out if you take and if this is serial in. A serial out on to LSB is happening. Okay, so this will be happening using a shift register. On shift register, the bit will be transferred. Now, 
after transferring one bit, we need to check the status of the counter. If the count is equal to eight or more, or else you can take some detail. Is this equal or eight? Okay, if it is true, what to be done? It should be making the, uh, you say, the shifter to supply. That means to get the new data. Okay, what are the things that has to be performed is you reset the counter. Counter will be made zero. That means I can say that it is resetting the counter. And we need to give a signal that uh, load signal. Uh, like this load signal operation is uh, two uh, stage operation. That means either load signal will be true or false. Only two uh, iterations. That means uh, this can be implemented by uh, modulus counter, mod to counter. Okay, so here we can say that toggle the load signal means every time you toggle it will be either true to false or false to true, mod to counter. So maybe we can uh, take this as load one signal flip this, flip the toggle so that the flipping will be happening until then it will be false, it will be true. Okay. Now, this is one iteration. And let me, uh, another thing is that when you are doing so, this will be performing the operation of shifter will be Shifting the data onto buffer. Shifter will be shifting the data onto buffer. This is the iteration that will be happening. Okay. And if this is false, that means the full count is not complete. You need to increment the counter. And not only that, you shift one bit of data one bit shift to right. We are doing right shift. These are the operations that has to be performed if this is false. So how many times you will be shifting this bit, right bit, uh, right shift will be eight times. And that many times you are incrementing the counter. So every time you increment the counter, that shifted data will be available on LSB bit and you try to check back uh, what is the count number. If that count is complete, you reset the counter and ask the supplier to supply the new bits of data on the buffer. This is very simple uh, iteration we are doing. So uh, how many elements are there in this design now? One is counter, the other one is shift. This one, shifter. Okay, so the counter operation of counting, the counter operation reset, when this will be happening, what is the equation? When the counter counts? When it is false. When the count is greater than or equal to eight is false. It will be counting. When it will reset? It is eight. When it is true. Ah, it complete. Count is complete. When the shifter will, uh, uh, we have this operation. No? When the shifter should uh, shift and when the shifter has to load. Loading is when the count is greater than or equal to eight, it will load. It will load. Okay. When it will shift, 
Shifting means one bit by bit towards right. No? It will be the counter greater than or equal to 8 is false. That means we can take these two as one condition. The counter counting and shifting, uh, shifter shifting will be happening when the complete count is not happening or the complete count is not finished. And the counter should reset or the shifter should uh, get a new byte from uh, the external device when the count is complete. Okay. And uh, one more signal we are uh, flipping this means we are indicating, we are uh, giving an indication to this supplier to supply the data. Okay. So maybe we can uh, issue a signal of load to the supplier. So altogether, if you take uh, what are the basic gates that are needed or what are the basic uh, hardware that is needed? A buffer, first one is buffer. We need a buffer to store the data. Okay. Um, that means this is register, set of registers. How many uh, bits you are taking? That much uh, size of uh, D flip flops will be used. Say so eight bits means eight uh, bit register you will be using for implementing this. Okay. And uh, uh, again, you will have a right shift operation to be uh, performed. That means a set of shift registers will be used. That means uh, two times we are repeating one set will be used for, uh, for storage of uh, data. That means one will be used as a buffer. The other one will be used as a shifter. Say eight D flip flops you are using here. The same eight D flip flops will be used here to shift. Okay. Then one basic T flip flop is needed to toggle this load of uh, this thing. Either to this one, this signal is there now. To have this signal implemented, you can have one T flip flop. That T flip flop will be issuing the signal of load being true or false for load operations. One T flip flop. Then a counter, another one. So first one is registry set. Second is uh, T flip flop. Third one is a counter. A counter size. What is the size of the counter we need? 8 uh, uh, eight uh, means it should uh, be more than 3 bit counter, no? Yes, ma'am. 4 bit. Yeah. So maybe 4 bit counter we can use. 4 bit counter will be used. So all this, uh, if you put together, we'll be getting uh, the design. Let me draw this. Like, where do you start? Start this is say you take a counter, a four bit counter, which will be getting a signal of what are the signals that are to be issued. Only that signals I'm writing. When the counter should reset, when the counter should count, and uh, it is based on the system clock. And this counter output will be given to uh, a comparator sort of thing. Why? Because we need to find whether the count is equal to or greater than or equal to 8. So, 8 uh, comparing this output, that means your 4-bit uh, uh, output with a comparator in order to issue a signal saying that the count is equal to 8 or greater than or equal to 8. That means uh, actually we will be seeing that whether the count is equal to 8 or not is the point of concern for us. Okay. And once this is uh, like uh, 
complete, what are the iterations that will be performed? What are the iterations that should be performed? Your byte buffer should be getting an issue of uh, signal saying that uh, uh, you need to load the register. No? So if this is, this will be 4 bit. Say this is your 8 uh, byte, size is 8. So we can say that if this is from the supplier, it will be getting the data. And this will be getting, or what you say, issued with a, a signal of load. Okay. This load signal will be based on the same system clock. And this will be going to the second set of registers. That is one more set of uh, same shift registers will be used. What is the size you are taking? The same size will be used here. Say if you take eight here, this will be eight, eight line. So this shift register, what are the operations when the shift should happen? When the load should happen, we have given these equations. Not here, these equations you have to refer. So this will be going to serial out. This is our ultimate output of the design. And uh, one more, I think this finished. This one. T flip lock will be used. So that whenever this load signal you are initiating, this load signals uh, are initiated, that will be based on the same T flip clock with the same system clock. He'll be issuing the load signal either true or false. That means uh, you will be um, making this as true or complement so that it will be going to the byte supplier. If it is true, it will be supplying the data. It will be false. It will be stopping the data. That is it. So this is our system clock, same system clock. Uh, Taken the complete design. Yeah, one is buffer, shifter. You have a count, comparing. When it is count uh, complete, it will be issuing this load signal and this load signal to the byte supply. Yes. Finished. The same uh, element we can uh, extend that uh, for the serial to parallel operation. See, what here we try to see is um, if the data supplier is uh, um, like ready to take the data, or what you say, not ready. Like, uh, is the data ready for the operation of dumping onto the buffer, or what you say, transferring all the bits for the single clock? That means whenever the data is ready for operation or transfer, collecting is bit by clock. When complete data is ready, it is dumping of data. This is your parallel operation. So all bits per clock. So what is that indication we need to have is whether the buffer is totally complete because in one clock all the bits will be getting transferred. If this data transfer is not complete, say you are not gathering all eight new bits some combination of old and new bits are happening because this is a continuous uh, bits that will be supplied by the supplier. No? So that eight bits truncation, the starting and ending point and new bits, if it is filled, then there should be an indication for 
the dumping element to read this accumulated data. Then this signal should not be initiated until new bits are coming, new 8 bits are coming. In between, if you uh, transfer what happens, it is the wrong information that will be dumped. Okay, because this is happening for one clock. One clock, all the bits, what are there, will be uh, read onto the registers. So there should be an indication saying that uh, this data is ready. Okay, so uh, for that, um, the byte supplier will be a, uh, what you say, an asynchronous operation, uh, which is uh, happening at uh, some other uh, design. Okay, so one bit by bit, where you will be taking, if it is uh, MSB to LSB, this is your MSB, and this is LSB, which is serial out now. So this is your input point. One bit by bit will be gathered. And once all the bits are ready, new eight bits are ready, it should toggle or indicate that it is ready for reading. A read operation you can give or ready operation. Any one indication will be given saying that you can take all the bits at a time and you can dump it on the buffer. Okay. So um initially shift uh, one bit onto msb that means i can take this as serially and uh, if this is uh, a new byte or not you can have the checking whether this is new byte or not you can check them okay is it synchronously dumped on with a new byte. Okay. If it is true, then uh, that means if all the bits are ready, or what, what you can say, eight bits you are checking for now. So maybe eight bits if they are ready, new eight bits are ready, then we will go for issuing a signal to transfer this byte, this byte from the shifter to that will be moving one bit by bit onto MSB really. Okay. After this we will be checking for whether the count is greater than or equal to 8. If it is true, then we will reset the count and we will issue a signal that it is ready to read, ready to be taken out. Okay, A ready signal will be toggled. You can uh, Flip the signal saying that it is ready for the dumping operation. Okay. Now, this will be done until all the bits are getting transferred. So, if it is not complete, you need to increment the counter. Counter will be incremented. That's all. Until that, uh, if I take this transition, Sorry, sorry. So, serial is on to MSB or KT. So, shifting of that data will be done uh, continuously for that many number of bits. Okay. So, this is your. Uh, serial to parallel operation and here see uh, we are uh, resetting the counter here also if that uh, number of bits are uh, needed number of bits are gathered now sync data is not complete it should be going on transferring the data that means here what we are uh, 
um, saying is the from the supplier get the needed data. If that data is come, then you try to put it on to the buffer, then make it ready to be dumped onto the output. Okay. So, okay. For this, what will be the iterations? What will be like uh, here you are showing a two state uh, thing? Something like begin the dumping or what you say, gathering of the information. And this is uh, something like I can take it as These two iterations, if you take, what are the equations you'll be getting? What is the state of like uh, um, this conditional output and uh, this conditional output? These uh, three equations, if you take, your design is complete. When the counter will be counting and uh, reset, the same operations, whatever we defined earlier, then what else? What are the other equations? Hmm. Shifter, no? When the shifter should uh, shift the operation or what you say, shift the data, Hmm. Any other equations? What are the other equations? Say if I begin and I name this as A and uh, in this load, this is say you name it this as uh, A and this as B. Three conditional uh, outputs will be generated. So begin Begin, begin dot A. What is the equation defined? And uh, load dot A, load dot B. These are implementation equations for us now. Define them. When this is coming out, when that is begin being true, that means in the state of begin, and the new sync data is ready. New sync data is ready. Then this iteration should be coming out. That means your counter clear or your transferring of the byte onto the buffer, all these things will happen. And load dot a is when that is in load state with the count being greater than or equal to 8 is uh, not complete. 
and load B, that means this one is in the state of load and what is the condition? When count is greater than or equal to 8. So, when the shifting operation is happening, you are not doing the dumping of uh, the uh, bit on the output. No? So, when it is in begin state, load operation will not be performed. Or when the, it is in loading operation, the new data uh, transfer or the dumping onto the buffer won't happen. That means these two stages will isolate or what you say uh, will not override any old this iteration. If this new data is happening, it will override the data on buffer. So to avoid that, we are taking it as two different states. When your machine is in uh, gathering or uh, accumulating state, it won't transfer the data. If, if uh, it transfers, what happens? It will be a wrong data that will be transferred, new and old, until uh, it is getting new 8 bits. If you do the loading operation, it will be an error data. Okay. So complete this iteration of gathering the new data, then you load it directly onto the buffer. Okay, so that's why we have taken this as two state uh, system. Ma'am, I have a question. Uh, I have a question. Um, is there no connect like arrow going back from the load to the no. begin? No, we are not giving any uh, like uh, bi-directional thing. Only whether the data is ready for reading from the buffer only will be issued. Okay, ma'am. Because bidirectional, if uh, you give again, uh, you need to go for a conditional check sort of thing. That uh, include, increases the complexity. Whenever yes, eight bits are tra getting transferred with eight clocks, issue a signal saying new data is ready. That is so simple, ma'am. Yes, Instead of again uh, giving a uh, signal saying that new data is read, it is taken into consideration. That sort of uh, complexity will be growing out. Okay. So, uh, can you attempt this admin? There won't be any answer if I ask it. Huh? Uh, something like this. When you will be resetting, uh, uh, like if you want to reset, say you, for even for the earlier design also, you are parallel to serial operation also. I found that somewhere there is an error happening in my uh, data transitions or data transfer sort of thing. I can have one asynchronous reset signal. Asynchronously, we can reset. Uh, normally, we indicate that with an asterisk on to the top. No? This asynchronous reset you can have. That means this is direct reset of the system if uh, we find that there is some fault happening on any stage, at any stage. Okay, so let me write this now. When the counter will be clear, or what you say, reset. I think reset is the term we used. When the counter will be reset, this one. Two, two places we are resetting the counter if you can see one is when accumulating the data the other one is when you are transferring the data so uh, can i uh, say that it, the reset can happen at the stage of begin dot a or this one load dot b at two stages we can have the count reset and the same, um, like uh, at the same conditions, at the same conditions, what are the other things that uh, will be happening is 
loading of buffer loading of buffer is happening at these two points and uh, the toggling of ready the flip of ready is happening at the same uh, conditions okay that means when new data is ready and the here uh, the complete transfer is uh, happening you will be getting these uh, signals initiated or these uh, operations performed when the counter should count is when the counter should count only at this point so it is load dot a it will be counting I think clear operation done counter loading over okay uh, when uh, when you use this operation it is direct reset operation you can perform uh, whenever this is initial reset maybe direct reset we can say direct reset is at begin So these are the things what uh, we have in the design. So basic uh, circuitry needed is registers. One for buffer, one set is for buffer, one set is for shift operation. Okay. Next, counter to count the iterations. Next, 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 next. You have two states. There should be a transition of uh, a state uh, that should happen here. Maybe state generator should be there. State generator. Like you have to uh, uh, direct your design whether it should be in begin condition or load condition. Because both won't happen at a time. When design is in begin, it won't be loading. When it is loading, it won't be uh, in the begin state. That means the iteration of buffering and transferring okay so for this maybe one t flip flop will be used one t flip flop will be used based on this uh, something like we try to shift between these two operations that means begin or load when the begin uh, will be happening or when the loading should be happening is it's based on the sync new data here, this one, or your count is greater than or equal to 8, this one. If these two happens, if these are the test conditions for us now, okay, your state generator will be making the transition uh, between your begin or load when the state will be or when your uh, design will be in the going to begin is when the count eight is complete it will be begin when the new sync uh, data is ready it will be going to load state that means it will be moving between these two states based on these two conditions satisfied got the idea what i am telling now you have two states between these two states our design should be toggling and the load operation will be or the load state will be coming when the new data is available. Okay. And the begin operation will be coming when the count is complete. When this count is complete, it should be going back to our begin operation. Okay. So between these two, it will be toggling. So you'll be using a, uh, what you say, a, T element sort of thing, T element sort of thing here. Again, this T element can be um, like guided by a flip flop, T flip flop, which will be taking the uh, direct uh, reset operation. If you if you like to have this reset also, 
into your design use one more flip flop use one more flip flop where uh, like uh, say you can take either this element or this element for your operation that means direct clear or preset i can use any one of the signal to make this as a direct reset uh, or a normal operation if i initiate this signal okay say this reset it will be coming from the asynchronous reset what we are putting here through a flip flop try to get this signal okay maybe t flip flop you can use if this direct reset is given uh, make this uh, element as uh, what you say zero clear operation uh, if i take maybe uh, reverse this but anyhow i am taking this as a clear operation say it will clear directly that means it will reset the system directly and it will take that uh, to begin operation okay if this is not uh, activated it will depend on these two signals and the later portion uh, i'm leaving that to you the counter uh, how you are taking is based on these uh, signals you can uh, draw okay uh, so you will be using two shift registers as i have shown for the earlier design saying one set for buffering one set for data transfer and one more uh, element here this uh, sync byte is there right? this sync byte maybe if you take one set of registers for buffering okay this register buffer is there right? this data you can uh, take it as a sync uh, operation through a byte detector that means here i can use one element of uh, what you say uh, new count sort of thing or any byte detection uh, process you can utilize here where new set of bits are identified issues this signal being true so by detector either you can use uh, a normal d flip flops which uh, will be taking uh, a new data for each clock that means say 9 bits or 8 bits 8 bits itself you take eight clocks will be will be waiting for eight clocks for that eight clocks this detector issues a signal saying that this uh, new data is available Okay, same signal you take this to the shift register okay. and th from this you can take it as uh, uh, can the receiver of right. that means parallel operation you are doing now so every register will be used with the same uh, system clock as we are saying and this is each bit by bit that will be stored okay and that bit being stored every time we will be testing or uh, detecting for 8 bits and if that is complete it will shift that uh, state from begin to load and then this byte re uh, will be supplied onto the buffer okay <coughs> okay so between these two you are taking the transitions now and based on this uh, um, what you say system we need to have the toggling of the ready signal you need to use a D flip flop here one second
this one. These two will be given to byte receivers. <laughs> and to find out this, we need to have a counter and a comparator. A counter with comparator. Okay. Four bit counter, if you take, it will be issuing a count greater than or equal to eight. So you'll be taking when the count should be count, when the count should be reset based on the system clock. So it's complete your, uh, what you say, data transfer in two different modes. Okay, I'll stop here. So uh, like next week uh, we'll have minor. Yeah. When you will be writing, uh, like on Tuesday or uh, evening hours? We'll have it in the evening hours only. Evening. Okay. So Monday or Tuesday? Uh, Today is 8th, no? Yes, ma'am. So 16th we'll have. 16th will be uh, Tuesday. Huh? Check it out. Check out the calendar. Like uh, Tuesday, if it is 16th, I will be working on Tuesday. Tuesday, uh, 16th is Wednesday, man. 16th Wednesday. Yeah. So 15th. We'll have it on 15th then, Tuesday evening. 5.30 to 6 or 5 to 5.30? 5 5.30 5 to 6 is better. 5.30 to 6. So it is confirmed that on Tuesday, 5.30 to 6, you'll have minor 1. Okay? Okay. Okay, okay then. I'm closing the session.